I recently built a computer for my son. However, when I turn it on, I can't get past the boot screen. I can't get into the BIOS or boot menu. And after about 15 to 20 seconds, the PC shuts off. I've tried different RAM, a different graphics card, a different SSD, keyboard and mouse with the same results. Other than the CPU and motherboard, I'm not sure what else to do. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. Well, she's a wee bit small. In all seriousness, I think these kinds of builds are super cool. The fact that you can pack so much performance into such a small footprint is no simple feat. And inside this particular NZXT H1 V2 is an ASUS RG Strix Z590 gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, an Intel Core i5-10400F, a GeForce RTX 2060, and 16 gigs of DDR4. Not the latest hardware, sure, but still a very healthy combination for some 1080p and 1440p gaming. I was also informed when the owner met me that most of these components were purchased second hand. He actually just recently built this system only for him to run into this screen here when first booting up. And apparently he can't get past this. And I think it has a lot to do with this warning message right here. USB device overcurrent status detected. System will shut down after 15 seconds. He can't load into, let alone install windows on the detected M.2 in this post screen. And that's about all the info we have. So there's something maybe drawing too much power from the motherboard. Maybe it's the motherboard itself. I think this is the first time I've ever seen this message. It's gonna be an interesting one. But hopefully by the end of this one, we can have the system back up and running with a fresh install of Windows. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Hi there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new, just know that everything you see us do in this playlist is free of charge to the owners of the rigs in question. We don't charge for labor, we don't charge for replacement hardware, and all of it is possible thanks to your viewership. So thank you very much. I'd also like to mention that if you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you have a broken PC or know someone who does, let's say it doesn't power on at all, or maybe it turns on but doesn't send a picture to your monitor, maybe it runs too hot, maybe your fans don't spin, etc., etc., feel free to reach out to me via the link in this video description. It'll send you to a form where you can describe your issue, submit photos, and we'll try to get to you as soon as we can. Now then, it's time to fire the system up and attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. Again, if we see something along the lines of this screen here, then we're on the same page. And if we aren't, well, GG. We could be facing multiple separate issues, which is a nightmare to troubleshoot. Here we go, powering on. All right, so that's a good start. Like all the fans are spinning, including this one little case fan here at the back of the H1. It's important to note this is the V2, so this has the revised riser cable, which apparently doesn't catch fire. So that's nice. We are waiting for a post here any second now. There we go. All right, so that looks healthy. And it goes right to this, where it again tells us that we have an overcurrent status detected. And true to its word, after 15 seconds, the system promptly shuts down. Now I can just simply fire it back up again, but it's going to repeat this over and over. And this is why the owner was getting frustrated with the rig. There's something either attached to the motherboard or maybe miswired that it is not liking. Heck, it could even be the motherboard itself, this being secondhand, it happens, things go wrong. Although I'd be willing to bet it's probably like a wiring issue or something. You know, this is not a lot of space to work with here. It's very easy to miswire, connect a cable where you shouldn't. And there's uh, a lot of crunching going on as well. Some stuff that doesn't look too good, at least on the surface. Example A, now I've tried to square the camera with the sides of the case so that we're looking perpendicular into it. You can see that we've got these two dim slots here, only two on this ITX motherboard, of course, and the top slot is, uh, it, well, it's bent a good bit. Just try not to bend this any more than you really have to. I feel it's also important to note that prior to picking this up, I had the owner attempt a power system on with all of his USB devices disconnected, so things like his keyboard and mouse, all of his peripherals just uh, detached from the system outright in an effort to circumvent that overcurrent notification. It didn't work though. We can access most of the internals by removing these two captive Phillips screws that hold the radiator portion of this AIO in place. 
and it should just hinge down like so. Kind of a clever design. And I think what we're gonna do is start by disconnecting all of these non-vital cables, so things like front panel, USB 2, USB 3, and uh, well, anything else we can find. So now the only things we've still connected are the 24 pin, the 8 pin EPS, the graphics card, its supplemental power, and the DDR4, just the vital stuff. I do have one fan attached as well, just to see if, uh, if the system's on or not. I'm not sure if we're gonna get LEDs or uh, any notifi notification from the board other than just the lights being on. Uh, well, we actually do have the power supply fan, so we'll use that as our reference point. I'll detach the pump. This will not stay on long enough for that to affect temperatures in any serious way. Boy, if this, uh, if this still creates a problem, then we might have to take the platform out of the case and maybe do a motherboard swap. I don't think the card is gonna to be to blame. It would be, it would be weird for the card to be giving this notification here. Okay, so this uh, is still giving us the same notification. Okay, so it says it a little further down. Yeah, overcurrent status detected. Yeah, kind of at a loss at this point of what to do next. We'll just, we're just gonna have to start swapping things out one by one until something sticks. Visually, all of our USB ports look to be okay. I don't see any pins that are crisscrossed or shorted out internally here. Uh, the Type C's look to be okay. Nothing wrong with the RJ45 port. I mean, visually, at least on the uh, back side of the board, Things look okay. Whoops, just realized I missed the uh, front panel type C connector. We'll try one more time with this, although I, I highly doubt this is gonna fix anything. 12 seconds later. Whoa, 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 hold on. I'm, I'm, in hindsight, I'm really glad I tried this. That is shocking. This is like a totally different set of warnings here. This is totally normal though, like no keyboard. It, it thinks that we swapped CPUs and that uh, we don't have a CPU fan connected, which is true but we're not getting the overcurrent warning at all. In fact, it looks like it's gonna try to boot us into the BIOS for the first time since this rig was assembled. I mean, at first glance, everything looks okay here too. They're just, just strange. I honestly can't explain that. It looks like just disconnecting the front type C connector has fixed our overcurrent issue. What a shocking twist there. Again, I'm really glad that we restarted that system and tested one more time with that type C cable disconnected. I've never seen this before but it works now. We've got everything else reconnected. The way that it was before, it's still a bit messy. I've got to clean that up. But uh, the only thing disconnected is a Type-C cable. And you can see now we've loaded into the BIOS, no problem. This first uh, fan here, this one connected to the uh, radiator was completely off though. And I think it had something to do with where it was connected. There's a little hub behind this bracket. And uh, so I rerouted that fan to the CPU fan header on the top of the motherboard. And all we're gonna do here is lower the uh, RPM a bit, so we're gonna change auto detect to PWM, and we're gonna change standard to silent, and uh, oh yeah, that is noticeably quieter. So now the fan won't run at like max speed all the time, it'll just ramp up when it needs to. Also notice one of these front panel board screws is loose for some reason, gonna tighten that up for him so that the uh, power button isn't as uh, floppy. Now there is one more test I'd like to perform with respect to the USB-C connector on the motherboard. I don't know if it's the motherboard or if it's the cable running from the, the, the case because as far as I'm aware, even though we have a front panel board built into the H1, it looks like the Type-C cable is just a pass-through more or less. So there might be a short in the cable itself or the header on the motherboard might be dead. And what we're gonna do is connect another case's Type-C cable to this motherboard to see if we can replicate the issue. And that'll be, of course, from a case that I know has a known working Type-C cable to rule out that extra variable. There's another problem though. Uh, I can't get past this screen here. It like wants to load into my Windows bootable media and then it just doesn't. It, it stops, it freezes, and it stayed like this for a good five minutes without doing anything at all. I'm not sure how he had a, a couple things enabled in the BIOS like secure boot um, and I've been tinkering with those to try to get around whatever this holdup is. My last bet is CSM, which I don't like tinkering much with, but sometimes CSM does work wonders. So we're gonna try toggling that and seeing if we can actually install Windows. I'm not going to share with you how long it's taken to get to this point where Windows is 
finally installing. In the meantime, I also upgraded his M.2. He had a 512 gig uh, NVMe in there, just a Gen 3 drive. I upgraded him to a Gen 4 along with uh, two terabytes worth of storage. So uh, quadrupling that for his son. Apparently this is his son's rig. So I wanna make sure he has enough space for his games. I was also having a bit of trouble, again in the BIOS, uh, toggling CSM, secure boot, just things that I don't really like messing much with because it seems like for every system we work with, the settings have to be different in order for things to function properly. We've managed to get it up and running here, and uh, well, I'm hoping that we don't run into any other problems because it's like nine o'clock at night. I started working on this build like at 10 in the morning. And while that's setting up, we'll go ahead and unpack just a, a random extra case I have laying around. This is actually from Antec, and uh, it has a USB-C port uh, on, the, uh, on the outside of the case. So we have a cable that we can plug directly into that motherboard to see if it is, in fact, the case to blame or the motherboard port. All right, so the system as is loads up repeatedly into the Windows uh, home screen there for setting up for the first time. That's exactly what we want. And this of course is with the USB-C cable disconnected. But everything else is plugged in where it should be. Now what I wanna do is turn the system off and connect another USB-C cable. So this one from Antec, again, it's the same connector. It's just, uh, this one's white. And I wanna see if we can get the same overcurrent notification with this one connected. And I know that this one is okay because we've gotten a system to post uh, with this connected before. Now it's looking a bit jank up here right now. We are just uh, gonna have this set up temporarily. It's connected to this case's Type-C port now. We'll power on. So essentially one of two things here is gonna happen. Either the system loads into Windows, no problem. And that would mean that the motherboard is fine and that it's the case's cable that's bad, or we get the same overcurrent warning, which would mean that the motherboard's connector, the header, is bad. Wow, it didn't even, it didn't even throw up a splash page. It just, <laughs> it just loaded straight into Windows. That is, uh, wow, that's interesting. A bad case cable? Now just for a sanity check, I always like triple checking findings. I'm going to power the system off again. We'll keep the camera rolling, one continuous shot. Or, well, if I can manage it, one continuous shot, we'll see how that works. I'm gonna power this back off, which I know is kind of cringy to do while it's loading into Windows, but this is a very quick check. We're gonna disconnect Antex Type-C cable, and we're going to reconnect. Where, where'd it go? Where's, uh... oh, here it is. We're gonna reconnect NZXT's Type-C cable. So this last time here, let's see if it will do, I gotta walk on this side. Let's see if it will do what it was doing when we first started filming this video. If it does, then uh, yeah. I mean, I expect it will, because that's what we were finding. I don't think anything I changed in the BIOS would, uh, would have changed that overcurrent warning. So let's see what we get. I suppose it wouldn't be the end of the world if it did load into Windows. Nope, see? Overcurrent status detected. It's that Type-C cable. It just does not like it. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell the owner just to keep that cable disconnected. There's something wrong with it. You could probably get a replacement from NCXT. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I'm sure they probably have maybe on hand a few of those laying around. If they don't, again, it's not the end of the world because it's just a type C port that you're not gonna be able to use. This motherboard actually has two on the uh, on the rear IO and one of those is a Thunderbolt port. So uh, even better than what the case offers. And again, this is going to his son who I don't think is going to make a huge deal out of it anyway. It's not like we could replace the motherboard to fix the issue because it's not the motherboard to blame. We'd have to replace the case. It's just, I think more work than necessary, but if that one Connection is that vital. It's not a big deal to just rebuild the system again in a different chassis. Um, but uh, it's possible that NZXT might be able to hook them up with that one Type-C cable. So I'll reach out to my contacts as well. Let's see if we can't get that taken care of. But uh, worst case, it works again. It loads into Windows, no problem. We have a fresh install. And uh, I just need to clean this up now because it's an absolute disaster in here. <sighs> Almost 10 o'clock now. We are uh, finally finished with this one. Again, got a nice little upgrade in there, but we didn't actually have to replace or swap anything out to fix the issue. It was just a faulty Type-C cable. 
which, I mean, that, that's a first for sure. I'm glad it wasn't something more major, especially considering a lot of these components uh, were purchased secondhand. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that, that's good news that I can relate to the owner. Uh, again, it's up and running. It wants to load into Windows within seconds now, no problem, thanks to that faster drive. And that's about where my journey with this system ends. Be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you thought was wrong with this rig when you first saw the symptom. Again, I, I think we did a, a fine job honing in on you know USB ports. I mean, to be fair, the, the, the post screen, the warning that we saw was fairly direct. So it did allow us to kind of hone in on the issue. I think without that, I might've emphasized uh, the power supply possibly. I mean, we, we didn't really have to do much else. We didn't have to take the CPU out or mess with the RAM or the graphics card uh, because we already had a, a, a decent clue to start with. So uh, big help from the motherboard. That was nice. A very quick fix to round things out. Despite me being a bit confused as to how that all worked, I just, uh, it's just weird. I, and it, it being the one cable that I forgot to disconnect when we tried the first time, just running off of only necessary cables, I just got really lucky that, that, I, that I caught that because if I hadn't, we'd probably be in day two by this point, but I'm happy we figured it out. Be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up whether or not you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Check out the relevant links in the video description. And again, if you have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and it doesn't have to be your system either. It could be a friend's system. If you want to you know, do the dealing on their behalf, that's totally fine. Uh, just uh, reach out via the form below and we'll do our best to get to you as quickly as possible. Again, no charge at all involved. We make money on the back end by making videos like these and your viewership is, the, I mean, that's, that's the whole reason why this is possible. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.